All right, aquatic biomes. We're just talking about two different types of zonation. Zonation in lakes and zonation in marine habitats. And some of this is going to be very similar. And let's say you have an incline here. And you're going to have two... You're going to have several zones here. But let's do... This area is the photic zone and the photic zone is anywhere there is light so light can penetrate down to a certain level whatever that level is is the photic zone and then you have the a photic zone which is where the light does not penetrate to um, the other things here we have this area that's shallow, that light's going to penetrate all the way to the sediment. And it would be nice if I had drawn your water coming up here, right? Um, this area is the littoral zone. And this area where you do have photic and aphotic, I should use a different color, my bad. Yeah, photic and aphotic light does not penetrate all the way to the bottom it is pelagic. If you know the um, the stingray song in Finding Nemo, it talks about pelagic, right? And that's going to be the same for marine water, but it's also fresh water, and that's just open water. The only other thing we have to know in a freshwater place, we have a little bit of vocabulary that's new. Um, this area, just the sediment, is the benthic zone. Benthic um, is just sediment. And then benthos is, I'm doing homework, baby. Uh, benthos is the collective name of the organisms that live in the sediment, in that benthic zone. And their main source of food is detritus. And detritus is dead organic matter. That kind of rains down from this photic zone, right? Um, so, dead stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's it on that one. Then, in the marine environment, we're going to have a few things that are similar, a few things that are different. You're going to have more a zone that comes out and then down sharply. And you're going to have your land up here, right? And then you're going to have um, a small zone that is the intertidal zone. This is the area that will be covered with, um, with water during high tide, but uncovered during low tide. And then you have, again, your photic and aphotic, just like before. Um, and benthic is like before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the things that we're adding new here over the, the continental shelf, this is CS, continental shelf, right? Over that, this is called nertic. Let me see. Oh, cool. I can zoom in with you. Oh, but it won't let me, right? There it goes. Nertic. The nertic zone. And that's just over the continental shelf. Mommy, 
And then you have oh, Oceanic out here. You still have Pelagic for open water. Pelagic. And you have a new term down here at the bottom. Abyssal. A B Y S S A L. An abyssal just means deep, like an abyss, right? Um, 2,000 to 6,000 meters. That's pretty deep. So there is your, um, your whole screen again. Um, last thing, we have a couple of vocabulary terms. I did this just to make you mad. Um, a thermocline. Hmm, I don't like that. Hang on. Thermocline is um, a narrow layer of abrupt temperature change. If you think of the lake in the... Um, summer if you jump in it's nice and warm but if you dive down there is a point where it gets cold quickly and that is your thermocline um, it depends on what type of area you're in and what type of body of water how narrow that really is lakes are especially layered um, the other term is turnover And turnover occurs in the fall and spring. And this is where um, the oxygenated water from the surface Um, goes to the bottom. And then the nutrient rich bottom goes to the top. And you hear people talking about the lakes turning and things of that sort. Um, this results from a change in temperature because remember water is densest at 4 degrees Celsius which is approximately 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's all we need to know for um, aquatic biomes.